All the sacrifices and the sleepless nights Well, they serve me well Only time will tell I just keep on praying that I'll find my way If I go through hell Only time will tell Only time will tell Big day today. Got my new garage. 16 by 36. So for a long time, I always wanted to get my own garage. I always thought it'd be the coolest thing just to have my own garage, my own space. Everything's well lit, heated, maybe air conditioned, I don't know. I just needed the extra space. I'm out of room, I need something. So I've been looking around Thought about buying land to build an even bigger garage on. And then basically, once I found out about these buildings, I thought this is just the perfect thing I can get right now and just get it done. I was thinking just 12 by 24, just for snowmobiles, dirt bikes, three wheelers and stuff. And then I found one of these on Facebook Marketplace that was 16 feet wide. I'm like, oh, that would be nice. Cause then you can definitely fit a car in here. I can actually fit two cars next to each other in here if I had some dollies and push them over. So started looking into that and I found this company, Lakeshore Mini Barns. So you can go check them out. I'll leave a description, but they'll have all their different styles of buildings. This is a deluxe garage with which has like the barn style roof, seven by nine garage door, loft. You can either get them in steel or wood siding. They all have wood floors. They're all pre-built, load them up on the truck as you saw and drop them off. And all I had to do was just get a gravel pad put down. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a tour. We had this tree here that was getting pretty rotten and I wanted to get this cut down so that it wasn't in the way for the gravel guy, which it still wasn't. Guy was supposed to come on Friday, cut the tree down and then gravel guy show up on Monday and all of a sudden this guy doesn't show up. We were kind of in a panic, but we finally found a guy to cut it down. They tied it to one of these trees and hooked on with their truck, pulled this way and it fell right where we wanted it to. So, so yeah, we got that down. And then gravel guy shows up and he got this done in one day, did a good job. I had to go around here with some dirt, but I was able to get a whole truckload of dirt for 10 bucks. So I got two truckloads, packed it in with my three wheeler, you know, so let's talk about cost. Now, I'm not gonna count the tree being cut down because you probably don't need to get a tree cut down, but something to consider. The gravel, for this pad, you wanna go one foot on the extra on each side of your building. So 16 by 36 would be 18 by 38. I think the base cost for that guy's company was, I think it was 1300, but he said if, if it slopes more than eight inches, he charges another two to three hundred. So the gravel costed me fifteen hundred. And if you look back here, this back corner, it actually slopes down sixteen inches. So that was a lot. The main thing with having a wood floor and gravel is yeah, it's not as strong and you'll never be able to have a lift and you have to be a little cautious welding over the wood. But I'm still saving five to seven grand if I went with concrete. Now, if I went with concrete, I could have went a lot wider with the building, though. Good enough. So, all these bottom supports are treated. And this also looks treated. It's all 4x4s. Four the deluxe garage has this style roof with a 7x9 garage door. I'm going to measure the ceiling for you guys so you can see. But the standard garage has a normal sloped roof but that makes your walls taller so you almost have the same amount of headroom you can put your windows wherever you want and your door 
it's trussed all the way until you get to the loft. The loft, eight feet. So it comes standard with this workbench too, which is nice. Workbench, shelves, loft, ladder, and the garage door is what they consider the deluxe garage package. The walls measure six foot four and three quarter. Then from the floor to the top of these joists is eight foot 11. That's pretty much it for the tour. I'm gonna hang my lights to start with. So these lights I got from Menards. These are 6,000 lumens. What are they, 70 watts? Four 6,000s and two 4,000s. 4,000s are 42 watts. So with these LEDs, I'm not gonna be running much wattage. I'm gonna try to run what I can off extension cords. I know I can run the lights, possibly my air compressor, just small tools, grinders and stuff. I'm looking into getting a generator, um, not just for this though, for camping as well, but a nice quiet inverted one so I can work at night and not have this loud thing going. In the future, I'm probably gonna run electricity to this building, but we'll see how much how much power I actually need. The winter is probably gonna be the worst when I'm trying to run air compressor, heater, grinder, sander, whatever. I'm gonna get these lights hung and see how it looks. lights hooked up in the shop got six of them I just gotta strap the cords up and to the beam so so it looks nice but what I got here is well first I went to Menards I got a heavy-duty 12 gauge cord because I want to run a lot of stuff out here off of one or two cords if I can but it just barely doesn't reach so I got this 16 gauge coming in through the door right now but I'm only running these lights, it's only about 420 watts. But the cool thing, I got this special box and this wireless remote. I'm probably, I was gonna mount it somewhere over here on the wall so when you walk in, but hey, you know, I'm gonna make this a shop house and maybe crash up there for the night and can go up there with this remote, turn the lights off or be anywhere, turn them back on. It's pretty neat, but this was 13 bucks only and it's pretty neat. Pretty much got the shop how I want it for now. I'm gonna give you a quick tour and just show you guys some of the projects I'm working on. Maybe I'll have some videos on those projects. And so yeah, I'm also gonna talk about my, how I wanna insulate this. The end walls are a little bit more difficult because so, these studs are 24 on center, the rough 16 on center, and this will be really easy to just put the, the insulation with the paper on. I forgot what it's called, the faced stuff. Um, my buddy gave me a roll left over from his camper he's redoing. That's R13, um, not faced, but it, it'll be fine. So I'm thinking I'm going to do everything R13 and maybe R19 in the roof just because heat rises. So like this will be easy to do the walls and ceiling might not be too bad. But then you get over here and you got this really wide space. So probably gonna add some two by fours. What I was thinking is I wanna go across each one of these sections with paneling and insulate that just to keep the heat down a little bit. Like I don't really need the heat going all the way up I'm talking winter time when I have my heater going. But then you get to the loft and there's no, those uh, cross braces stop. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna add one more, then just gonna go, just gonna make a wall that goes straight up the loft just to block that off. And then down here so I don't lose any heat, I'll just have some more insulation. And then, Another thing that's weird is the the back bench is nailed to the studs, so I can't easily take this off, insulate it, so I'm just gonna have to cram it in there. But 
All right, let's talk about my projects and then wrap up this video. So the CR I'm building wheels for right now, I got the rear wheel done. I'll have a whole video on this. I have a lot of hours into this. New new wheel bearings, new spokes, new rim, used rim that was re-welded. But I'm gonna, new tires, tubes, all the struggles of that stuff. But, but so basically that's my summer set of wheels that I had to fix because the rims were just cracked. But yeah, my winter set's coming off. Then I gotta change out my jets for summer, take the duct tape off my radiator to keep it cool. Basically convert it back to summer. So that's one thing. This other bike I started back in end of, end of winter, beginning of spring, 79 KE 100. Um, or no, it's not a KE. The KE is a bigger bike. This is a KM. M must mean mini, but uh, it still ran, but it was pretty rough. I got the crank sent out right now, rebuilding. I just got the cylinder back. So this is the motor, it's gonna go back together for that. Um, my first ever video you can check out of me riding it. It's, it's fun, it's basically my pit bike. We were looking at getting a mini bike and they're all kind of overpriced. And we found this 200 bucks, bring it home, lost spark right away. So I put in a different stator that I had, just had a whole box of parts and it's pretty fun. So we got that and then the old 200X, 84 200X made to look kind of like 85. I just haven't worked on it in a while cause I've just been busy and doing some other motors. But what's gonna have to happen is I have to pull the motor cause the kicker is just locked up. That's why I have, I have this kind of just sitting there cause I took this cover off hoping that those gears in there were junk, but those are fine, cause that would be really easy to fix. But no, everything looks fine. So on these engines, you have to split the case, take the transmission out just to get at the spring. I, I bet you the spring or a gear broke, probably the spring. But this thing only has three and a half hours on it since I put the meter on and probably another hour of just running. But yeah, I finally get it jetted, running good, and then kicker is just junk. And you can push start it and drive it, but I don't know what, how much metal is in there, so I'm not going to risk damaging all my new stuff. So I think I'm just going to hit on the main main things when I put it back together and show you guys what I did to it. That's a 71 Olympic hood. I don't know when I'm going to get to that, but probably my sled I want to get ready for next season is my 1980 exciter 440 yamaha um going through the whole skid it kind of needed a lot of work but that's i think i'm gonna start doing some vintage sled races i think i put a short clip in my winter highlights video of the lake cross from this year it basically was worse than the year before it was just my studs are too short everyone's running three eighths to half inch above the lug and mine are only like an eighth. I don't know who studded that track, but it's my trail sled and I don't want to swap out studs just for one or two races a year and then ride trails the rest of the season and just beat them, just beat them up. So that's kind of done with that for Lake Cross, unless I got another track. As far as trail sled, it needs nothing. So I'm just gonna leave it alone and race the old vintage sled because those barely have any lug at all on the track. I got a new track and those studs will stick up plenty and should grip well. Parts are cheaper for old stuff if you can find them and I don't know, it'll be fun. Just finishing up this front wheel, chewing it up. It's close, but it has some wobble yet I'm trying to get rid of. But yeah, once I get that done, I can throw the tire on it and then mount it up, put the disc brakes on and then I'll finally have a dirt bike again in the summer. Like, I didn't even ride it last summer. I don't know, been busy. So that will be nice to get the dirt bike going, get in the habits of riding and getting in shape, basically. <laughs> but got all my lights hung. Got my press, a vice I got to put on the bench. Got one fan. I might add a second fan. Got some flags that I had in my other shed. So I thought I'd have all the lights on all the time and turn them on and off with this remote. You really only need a few lights on at a time, so I extended all these cords so I could reach them with some good old BR9s. 
actually, what is that, BR8s? BR8s, BR9s, you know, NGK, you know, no champions up here. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Just wanted to, to fill you in on what I've been up to because I don't post videos a whole lot. I've been doing projects. Stay tuned, though. I'll have some more videos coming up, and I do have one more surprise that I'm going to be put in here and it's gonna take up a lot of room. Big project, but it's pretty cool. If you check out my TikTok, you might be able to figure it out. I just gotta get some gravel put down for the ramp. I'll leave a link in the description for the company where I bought this and you can price other buildings. I really like it. I just wish it was a little wider, but if you go wider, you're gonna wanna have concrete and then the price goes way up. A slab this size is probably five to seven grand and prices just keep going up. This is still enough room for me to work all the way around a vehicle and that's basically why I bought it because I wanna work all the way around a vehicle, summer, winter, snow, rain, whenever, indoors and get stuff done. It's gonna work good. Don't forget to subscribe.